if you go through the day, let alone months and years, not being yourself, but pretending to be somebody else, it just really kills your self-esteem because it makes you feel like I'm not good enough as who I am. So I got to pretend to do something else. And we might do that every once in a while. People talk about fake it to make it and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, if you do that day in, day out, that is just a recipe for disaster. Hey, everyone, this is Kim O'Neill from the Every Day is a New Day podcast and live show. And you're listening to the Going North podcast with the hilarious Dom Brightman. Be sure to subscribe to our show so you don't miss any episodes. And remember, every day is always a new day. Today's episode is sponsored by book number two from Dominic Dom Brightman, Stay the Course, The Elite Performer's Seven Secret Keys to Sustainable Success. It is the field guide to help unleash the elite performer that is inside of you. Cop it today on Amazon.com or heading over to DomBrightman.com and snag it in book, ebook, and audiobook so that way you can take it on the go and get yourself on the go to your northbound success. And today on the Highlight Real Builder for Authors, known as GMP, the great, glorious, and glamorous, is the Going North podcast. And we got another super special, awesome human today, folks. That's right, indeed. Another super special, awesome human today. Courtesy of my good buddy, Divya Perrick, baby. That's right, the DP, the fellow D, who's also on the east of the coast, baby. Because, my goodness, today's wonderful guest is a, an award winning author, folks. That's right, an award winning author, racking up all the wins who is also a father, husband, and introvert advocate. So let's give it up for the one and only Stephen Friedman. How you doing today, Steve? Doing real well, thanks. Thanks for having me, Don. Woohoo! That's right, Dave. It's a pleasure having you on, my man. Pleasure having you on, indeed. So my goodness, my goodness, as with all introductions, they're not allowed to be 88 and 3.5 hours long. So am I filling in any gaps I may have missed Sure, sure. So, I mean, you hit the you hit the greatest highlights, but there, like everybody's story, there's uh, all sorts of details in between. Um, I think I, I consider myself a late bloomer because I, um, you know, I believe that people are introverts or extroverts or usually somewhere on the continuum based on the situation. But you know, that's how we're we're born, and things change, and we we change and adapt. But I spent much of my childhood feeling that I was different. I had three older sisters. They were all pretty extroverted. So I always compared myself and felt like I was just different. And I wasn't sure why I was different, but I just was. And as I grew up and and went off to, to college and went to uh, work in the corporate world, I enjoyed what I was doing, but the social situations were just odd for me. And, you know, you, you can't avoid them, shouldn't avoid them. And, uh, but I really didn't feel like I had the tools to, to do well with those. And again, felt like I was different, but I wasn't really sure why. And I went through most of my 30 year corporate career feeling that way. Uh, later in my career, and we can talk about this in more detail, but I, I kind of had a variety of situations thrown upon me that kind of forced me to realize that as an introvert, I just need to try and do things my way instead of trying to do things the way everybody seemed to be doing them around me. That was a recipe for failure. It was for for many, many years for me. And once I made that change, um, work was a whole different experience and engagements with people was a whole different experience. Nowadays, I've retired and I've just really um, enjoyed learning more, sharing that with other people and um, trying to uh, advocate for the hidden half that have so many great things to share, whether at work or or socially. And that's really what brings me here with you is to just um, reach out and and, uh, and chat a bit more about my story, but also some of the tips and strategies that I've used to try and help me adapt into those situations and, and feel more confident. Oh, yeah, that's right, indeed. And feeling more confident indeed, because if I'm not mistaken, you found the confidence to publish three books, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. Yeah. So um, when I when I finished my uh, corporate career, 
like many people, I was like, well, I probably should do something else. And I, I uh, was happy with my work experience, but didn't really want to go back to work somewhere. And so I thought about what I would like to do. And um, I used to write when I was a kid, when I was in high school, thought I would go into journalism until my parents convinced me otherwise. <laughs> and um, so I started writing just to see how that was. And my first book was in Search of Courage, my memoir, and it was just such a therapeutic experience. I mean, how often do we have to the chance to sit back and think about life, right? When, it, when we're in the middle of it, we don't do that. And when we're in our 20s, 30s, and 40s, we're usually too busy and not really looking back into our teens or our 20s and trying to think about, well, you know, why did that happen? And what could I have done differently? And what could I have learned? And and all that sort of stuff. So I was able to do that with my first book and learned a lot. And one of the things I learned was that I wasn't alone. And I mentioned that I felt different and I really felt alone when I was a kid. And I had some friends, but I, relatively speaking, I felt like I was alone and I wasn't sure why. Only through my writings did I realize that roughly half the people in the world and in most situations, whether at work or in a social situation are, are introverted to whatever extent. And um, so I realized I wasn't alone. And I realized um, I started um, my website when I was writing that first book and, and um, uh, put out blogs. And it really gave me a great opportunity to engage with other people. And, you know, introverts that are 15 and trying to figure it out, introverts that are 80 and figuring it out. I had wow. one uh, of my uh, readers send me a note. She said, I'm 80 and I just found your blog and I've read some stuff and I realized I've been doing it all wrong for all of my life. And um, it's really given me an, uh, an opportunity to build my own confidence and think about how I do things. And she was 80. And it's just amazing to think about that. And so if, if anything that we can do uh, can help, help accelerate people's journeys, I think that's really powerful because we only have one life and life is as long or as short as it's going to be. And, and um, you know, I know I had a lot of experiences where I missed out on things. Um, so my, my books and my website have really helped me to learn a lot and um, share a lot. So I'm really thankful for that. Woohoo! That's what I'm yeah. talking about. They learn a lot and share a lot. Man, that's got to be amazing and heartwarming, like an 80 year old woman finally getting some clarity it's like oh man i've been an introvert all these years and i didn't even know until now now it all makes sense yeah you know i think a lot of people take a test right when they're maybe in their their teens or 20s or something many people have taken tests like the myers-briggs um uh test and so it'll spit out some results that say you're an introvert or an extrovert and this is how you think and and those are fine. And, you know, I think labels have their place, uh, good or bad, and it might highlight some things that you want to learn more about. But myself, like many other people, I think you get, we get those results, but we don't really learn about what that means. So when they say introvert, and then they move on to other stuff, well, that can be kind of dangerous, because if, if anybody's looked up in a, a dictionary or a thesaurus under introvert or introversion, you find some of the really most incorrect and cruelest things out there. A uh, loner, antisocial, icicle, wallflower, basically anti-extrovert, which is not really true, but also it just shines in very negative light on introverts. It doesn't talk about all the strengths and, and, uh, uh, um, and great qualities that introverts bring to any situation. And so when we take these tests, we hear, hear about introversion and we're left to our own devices on how we uh, learn about that, if at all, then oftentimes that's really negative and um, doesn't really help us at all. Um, I think finally some people, finally everybody at some point, even if you're 80, has this moment of clarity. It may be that we read a book. Uh, Susan Cain wrote the book Quiet um, 10 or 15 years ago. And it's kind of the Bible for introverts. And there's other books, there's podcasts like this, there's um, there's a, a therapist, there's just uh, friends or family that understand it and have a conversation. And suddenly the light bulb, light bulb will go off and the realization that it's not a negative. I used to think that introversion was a curse for most of my life. And I've realized only in the last probably 10, 15 years that it's, it's a blessing. But I need to know and we need to know more about what that really means. What are my strengths? How can I use them to feel more comfortable and confident and be my authentic self? 
I mean, the wasting years, which I, I did and many introverts do um, quite a bit of wasting years of not being authentic, but wearing a mask and pretending to be somebody that seems to have it, have it all together. And um, so I, I think that that uh, that journey is needed. And the earlier we can go through that journey, the more uh, comfortable and, and uh, confident we'll be. Yeah, oh, yes, indeed, yes, indeed. All the comfortability, baby, that's right, indeed. It actually is kind of interesting, you are right about that. It's like when you look at Pitcher Verdon and think of the wallflowers. Like, mm -hmm. hey, it's not really that way. It's really just an energy, like how we really recover energy and how we gain that's like fun. extra like extroverts they around more people they get more energy introverts uh, <laughs> kind of take a gas out of the tank here and around to many people so my goodness so what you, you touched a bit on it already but any other things that stick out folks need to be aware about and things that they may get wrong about introversion since a lot of folks time like to make it a e versus i sort of thing <laughs> right yeah so i mean you talked about the energy and i think that's a great topic because that that is these days the more common uh definitions or differentiation between them so it's not positive and negative characteristics or traits it's just really how we how we build and use our energy and um so i've talked a lot with other introverts about just being aware of that and thinking about what are, what is my energy level right now and i think what's really important is don't wait until six o'clock at, at the end of a work day to say, well, I'm completely wiped out and exhausted. Now I'm going to go home and I just need some me time. I need to read. I need to spend time with my family and just downtime to re-energize. All those are true and really great things for most introverts, but don't wait until you get home. Find little pockets during the day where you can just you know, take a walk around the floor or the campus. Um, listen to some music for just a couple of minutes. I mean, people are going out on smoke breaks all the time. You can listen to music. You can jot down a few things like your journaling, things that just give you a bit of a break and help you re-energize so that as you re-energize during the day, you're ready for the next meetings. You're prepared for the meetings and you've got the mindset for it. Otherwise, our energy level just um, plummets as we go through, especially the afternoon. So we're not our best selves. We don't feel like we're, we're doing the best job. And, uh, and then we just crawl home, crash on the couch, and our family gets whatever's left of us. So it is understanding our energy and managing that throughout the day. And, and I think it's important for introverts to recognize that. And I think it's important for extroverts to recognize that. I, I really believe that introverts, one of our responsibilities to be, is to be a big advocate for ourselves. And uh, because there's a lot of misunderstandings, as we already talked about, of, of who and what an introvert is. And, and that's fun. That's understandable of how that has developed. But it really is up to us to share a bit with our coworkers, with our friends, with our managers, you know, that, hey, I, I'm an introvert and I really am very good at these sort of things. And sometimes I'm, my energy um, is challenged when I'm in big groups, for instance. So I usually build my energy up with taking a walk before a uh, networking event or before a big meeting. And um, I'll do other things to help build my energy up. And it works really well. And I am, I think I'm really good at planning and organizing, learning and building deep relationships with people. And so your manager and your coworkers should understand you bring a lot of talents to the table that many extroverts don't bring. And so Together, we're part of that diversity and inclusion that the corporate world and, and the world in general has been going through for decades. But we, we need to help um, educate other people, including ourselves. Yeah, that's right. That's what I'm talking about indeed. That's what I'm talking about indeed. That introvert advantage right there, baby. That's right indeed. That's right indeed. That's right indeed. So my goodness, man, my goodness. So with uh, your latest book, The Corporate Introvert, my goodness, helping up the wonderful corporate introverts, like my goodness, man, like in, in some fields, it may be more apparent, like, oh yeah, sales might be extrovert heaven. And some other fields, like, I don't know, like maybe scientists or maybe librarians, like, oh yeah, they're fully mm -hmm. introvert, man. So my goodness, uh, with, with all of your wonderful experience being a, corporate introvert and then putting pen to paper putting his book together what 
What do you think is the main thing you want folks to get out of this book in general? You know, I think it, it's really understanding who you are, what your strengths are, what your passions are, and following those. So don't let anybody tell you that because you're an introvert, you need to be doing these certain things that you can't engage with other people. So you need to be in a small little room with your computer all day. If you like that and you enjoy it and that's your passion, you should go for it. Um, I've met some uh, people that are in sales that are um, introverts that are phenomenal at it, but they'll approach it differently, right? So if they go to a um, industry outing and there's a big cocktail hour, you've got the extroverts working the room. They're, they're moving back and forth. They're talking, they're injecting themselves into all, all the different cocktail tables and they'll walk away with dozens of business cards. The introvert, on the other hand, and the best, and I tried to do the extroverted approach to those sort of things because I was in supply and trading. So we had a lot of interface with other, with other companies and other individuals um, often. I tried to do that and it really didn't work for me. And I realized later that I'm much better in a smaller group setting. And so I might, um, I might skip the cocktail hour, but have uh, separate one-on-one -on -one or small group discussions with the other parties um, in a meeting room or, or at the bar, but at our own table, that sort of thing. And what I found is, you know, I certainly wouldn't meet nearly as many people as the extrovert that's working the room, but I would meet people and we would, um, generally introverts are not big fans of chit chat. Uh, so, you know, we'll dive in fairly quickly, get into the meat of the discussion and get to know each other, maybe get to know each other from a family perspective and hobbies and that sort of stuff. But it will also start to understand more about what, what do they do at work? What are, what's their business like? What are they needing? How can we work together? A lot of those things don't get covered when you're in a cocktail party with hundreds of people around a table. I mean, generally, that's just chit chat, and uh, which is probably appropriate because you don't want to be sharing secrets or trying to um, uh, share information with competitors in that sort of environment. So introverts that really want to um, have those more uh, substantive conversations can do that. And so if you're in sales, you're learning a lot about what the other party needs. So you probably won't walk away with dozens of business cards. You may walk away with one, two, three, or four, but chances are they're pretty good relationships that you can definitely follow up on afterwards and build tremendous value. So sales is not for everybody. Sales is not for every extrovert, and it's certainly not for every introvert. But I really think that we should kind of push off to the side the idea that there are certain jobs that an introvert is prepared for or will be happy or successful with and certain jobs they won't be, but just follow your interests and your passion. And with that and learning what the, your strengths are that you can apply to that job, you can be successful in anything you choose to do. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, Dave. That's what I'm talking about, Dave. That's right. Whatever you choose to do, y'all. That's right. Be darn good at it. If an introvert, that means you have a higher chance of being extra good at it. Indeed. That's right. Indeed. That's right. Indeed. So my goodness, man. So what's next for you, man? Because you got these wonderful books out and you got these wonderful quizzes for folks to take. And amazingly enough, it's used through Google Docs. Took the test yesterday. I'm like, oh, wow, this is freaking amazing, man. So what was the thought process be? On that was that from your introvert superpower of planning or like how did that even come about yeah. man uh you know probably a little bit of that i really um w one of the things you get out of the test right is or the quiz is is it gives you a report a personalized report for each person that takes and we've had like 1600 people that have taken it that uh, talks about what are your greatest strengths and so for me I, things like um preparation and uh, is really key and i think it's it's the most common uh, strength for introverts, actually, amongst the people that have taken the quiz. And I think that knowing that and then leveraging it really makes a big difference because I make sure I prepare for my presentations, my meetings, my, my social events. I prepare. I think about who's going to be there, what I might want to talk about, what they might want to talk about. And so I feel more comfortable, have less anxiety going into those situations. And then we can have that conversation that I would like to have. Um, and so the quiz itself came from um, some of that. It came from the fact I, I, I love to learn. I think a lot of uh, everybody, most everybody likes to learn. I think it's a common introvert strength as well. And so it gives us 
an opportunity to learn about ourselves. It takes, I think, those Myers-Briggs sort of experiences and goes to another level of saying, okay, fine, I'm an introvert, but what does that mean? And, and then not only do we say, well, here are your most common or your strongest uh, uh, traits or characteristics, but here's how can you, you can use them um, in certain situations. And here's some of the warning signs of overuse, perhaps. And so I think that's been really exciting to kind of put that out there. I think it's become very popular because people just want to learn more about themselves and take away things that they can use at work or in their social situation. And um, so that we started that last year and keeps getting a lot of, uh, of hits from people that are just curious. And from there, they uh, certainly can browse the website. I've got well over 100 different blogs on a variety of topics um, that are intended to just help um, introverts to learn and to embrace who they really are with some tips and strategies. So that's been, I, I love writing the books. Writing blogs is a very different experience, but in many ways I like it better just because you get, you get um, almost immediate feedback. Uh, you get to write smaller bits that Oftentimes, my readers say, I, I'd really like to learn more about this. So we talked um, a couple of weeks ago, one of the blogs was about the chemistry of the introvert brain, actually very different from extroverted brains. And it's really quite interesting to learn about those sort of things. And so the website provides the opportunity for me to, to do that and to try and connect with, with other people who are just curious about those sort of things as well. Oh, yes, I'm talking about indeed, as I'm talking about indeed. That's right. Because folks do love to learn. That's right, indeed. Even if they don't right. want to admit it, it's like, oh, shoot, I can do that. Wait, there's a shortcut to get to work this whole time. I don't have to fight traffic for as long. Like, oh, yes. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I spent uh, 30 years in corporate America. And when I retired uh, about five years ago, I had a retirement party and we had maybe like 50, 60 people that were there that I invited from across my, um, uh, my work experiences. And so some of them knew each other, but many of them didn't. So they kind of sat in clusters based on, on uh, where I had known them and met them. I was fortunate to work for an energy company, the same one for 30 years, but in probably 10 or 15 different jobs. And um so we're talking and everything and toward the end, they're like, well, what, what are you going to do next? What does retirement have for you? And I said, well, I'd love to write. You know, I think I, I wrote before. I enjoyed it. I'd love to dip my pen in and, and start writing again. And well, what would you like to write? Well, the first book I'm actually working on is my memoir about this thread of introversion in my life. And the room went dead silent. And uh, people started looking at each other. And then suddenly they started talking about, they raise their hand, you know, and they're like, well, wait a minute, you know, I've worked with you for three, four or five years, whatever the case may be. You're not an introvert. I, I've known you, we've, we've had dinner, we've traveled, we've been in the trenches on, on work issues and stuff like that. There's no way you're an introvert. And uh, so I had three reactions to that. First, I thought I have pulled it off. What a caper. <laughs> uh, so I, I wore this mask and I pretended because I didn't think that my true self could be successful or be viewed as being successful and have the opportunity to, to um, be successful in projects or to be um, promoted and things like that. And, and I had a good career and, and I clearly pulled one over on all these people and I've kind of felt like that was a success. But then I realized afterwards that it was such a missed opportunity in, in a couple of different ways. First, my health was not great while I was working, a lot of stress. I went to the doctor several times. I'd have shingles and sciatica and rashes and all sorts of stuff. And my doctor would just say, listen, I can give you stuff to cover up that um, stuff. However, it's really the source. You have to figure out the source. And by that time in my career, I understood what the source was, right? It was pretending to do to not be who I really was. And um, so I missed the opportunity to share that with other people and to just be myself. And, you know, if you think about it, if, if you go through the day, let alone months and years, not being yourself, but pretending to be somebody else, it just really kills your self-esteem because it makes you feel like I'm not good enough as who I am. So I got to pretend to do something else. And we might do that every once in a while. People talk about fake it to make it and all that sort of stuff. But 
you know, if you do that day in, day out, that is just a recipe for disaster, low self-confidence, and just really, you know, a lot of mental issues. And um, so I wish I had confidence and the courage to really be myself. And the third thing I realized after I really pondered it for a while was I also missed out on, on an opportunity because chances are half the people I worked with roughly were introverts as well. People that I worked with, even my, my some of my managers and certainly some of my staff. And some of my staff were probably in the very same situation, trying to cover it up, not comfortable, not sure that they could be successful in the organization as an introvert. And I had the bully pulpit, if you will, to, to I, I could have raised my hand and said, hey, I'm an introvert and here's what I've learned and here's why I can do things that I never thought I could do before. And here's what you can do to be successful. So don't leave the company. Don't feel like you have to be pigeonholed into a job that you don't like just because it has less social interaction. And don't feel like you can't be successful, but be yourself and learn about these sort of things and, and go on this journey. And um, I missed out on the opportunity to be that advocate for most of my career and with most of the people that I worked with. And that really honestly has driven me a lot since I retired. And that's a lot of what that book, The Corporate Introvert, uh, how to... Um, thrive and lead with confidence is all about because it's really taken my 30 years and what I've learned late in my career and since then and trying to help others to uh, stand tall in in their corporate environment and be successful without having to wear a mask all day yeah that's right indeed that's right indeed it's like, hey, wait a second. What do you mean an introvert? <laughs> we know you for 30 years. <laughs> That's right. That's right. There's a, there's a lot of people that have that exact same experience I've discovered and, you know, may have the same reaction every day. I'm pulling it off. I'm, I'm you know, nobody knows the real me and that's good. And, um, and eventually th that kind of personal burden will come home to roost. And uh, so I'd certainly encourage people to, you know, talk to other people that know, read a book, um, you know, talk to your therapist. Uh, you know, I've, I've done all of those and it's really made a huge difference in, in my life since I'd say my mid forties. Sweet. That's what I'm talking about indeed. So since you've been on this wonderful podcast tour, spreading the good word of why introverts are freaking amazing. Is there a question that you wish you'd be asked more often? I think we, we've talked about the confidence and everything. And, and I think there's just this misunderstanding. And so I think a, a, que a good question would be, um, do in, are all introvert, do introverts lack confidence and self-esteem? Is that just part of our DNA? And um, I mean, many people think that. I thought that after struggling for years and many other people that I hear or talk to feel that way, but the answer is absolutely no. There's no reason why an introvert has to have low self-confidence or self-esteem. I think a lot of it starts from early on. So I've met some people that have had an experience when they were kids or teenagers where their parents were ultra supportive. They understood what introversion was. They were, they were very supportive of their child who preferred to be home and do their own hobbies. Yeah, um, and it doesn't mean that they're, they never go out or they don't have friends, but that's how they re-energize. And that's kind of their safe, comfortable place. It certainly is for me as well. So the parents that support that and say, you know, tell me more about, you know, what you're working on, um, really have that self-confidence to be themselves from an early age. And that carries through with life. Like many things, those are formative years for us. On the other hand, parents that say, you know, you really need to get out of the house and go talk to your, talk to neighbors and go play with your friends and stuff like that. Um, that is not very helpful. And um, I grew up in a, a loving environment um, with uh, older sisters and my parents were great. But I will tell you that my mom nudged me out of the house on weekends and throughout the summer, sent me to summer camps and things like that, where I was basically felt like I had to be on for hours and hours and hours. And, um, and that that was the right way to do it. And I, um, I think that really created that low self-esteem for me. But, but introverts should certainly take away that that is not a given. We can control that. 
whether we're young or, or old, whether we're parents and we can affect that for our kids these days, very important, or whether it's just for ourselves and we're in our 30s, 40s, or 80s, we have the opportunity to learn. If we learn about ourselves and we practice things, we'll have successes that build our confidence. And uh, there's no reason why introverts can't be as confident as anybody else. That's what I'm talking about, indeed. So for those introverts who may be listening right now and may have low confidence, any tips for raising their confidence? Um, you know, I think it is just small things. It's, we can't just say, hey, be more confident in that situation, right? That, that doesn't work. I think it really starts with, and it's one of the drivers behind the quiz that I put out, which is free and on the website and, you know, happy for everybody to take it. But the, the whole reason is that I think it starts with understanding who we are and what our strengths are. Everybody's strengths are different. But if we learn about some of those strengths and how to apply them in different situations and then start to apply them, it doesn't mean that suddenly I'm going to be a completely different person tomorrow and do everything completely differently because that's kind of scary. That's that's hard to do right away. But maybe I can implement some of the things that I've learned in some situations every day. And then as I do bits and pieces and I feel more comfortable and authentic, I'm building my own confidence and I do a little bit more and a little bit more. And um and it doesn't mean that you need to go to this scary place. You know, if, if you don't want to go uh, speak in front of hundreds of people, you shouldn't do that as an example. But, you know, to find that place that you're stretching yourself and growing by working your strengths, your own uh, strengths in all these different situations will build that confidence. And, um, you know, I, I'm definitely a different person than I was 10 years ago. And a lot of other people are taking this journey and realizing that um, that they too can can be as successful with whatever they choose to do, it just takes uh, takes some time, takes some learning and dedication to to get there. But it's clearly an opportunity out there for everyone. Ah, uh, that's what I'm talking about, indeed. That's what I'm talking about, indeed. Yes, dig is hey. Sometimes you know, it's be like, hey, be confident. It's like how. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, so short, short, quick story, but I mentioned I have three older sisters. Um, the, one of my sisters is is a, a big extrovert, love her to death. You know, we, we have a great time together, but she'll say, you know, just go in. You know, you need to have the approach that you go into these social situations because you're curious and you want to learn about other people and you never know what you're going to learn when you meet people. So go talk to everybody. And, and, and it's like, you know, I appreciate that. I appreciate that you're trying to help me, but that is through the lens of an extrovert. And so that's what you do. It works for you. I'm happy that it works for you. That would never work for me, you know? And so I think that we just need to, um, recognize what works for us and what doesn't. Um, one of the things I talk about on the website is that it's not that we need to change ourselves, it's that we need to be ourselves. And um, if we can do that, then we're going to be much happier. And, um, you know, again, I love to spend time with my sister. But if you're really trying to figure it out, you need to also spend time with introverts that have kind of gone through this journey and figured it out themselves and can tell you how other introverts can be successful in situations, not how to put on your extrovert mask and try and be successful. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about indeed. So if your wonderful book, The Corporate Introvert, was a food, what would it be and why? Mm, I, you know, I, I would, um, I'll say that, I'll say ice cream. <laughs> One, because I, I love ice cream. And, I, you know, if anybody doesn't love at least some flavor of ice cream, I have to wonder about them. But I think that uh, <laughs> there's a lot of tips and strategies in the book. And, um, and how you apply them varies based on who you are and what your strengths are and what your situation is. You know, some people work, some people don't. Some people are parents. Some people that read it are parents of introverts trying to figure it out. Uh, some people are uh, extroverted leaders trying to figure out how to get more out of their team. And so I think that that it's ice cream because it's soothing and comfort comforting, but it also comes in all sorts of different flavors. So there's uh, there's flavors in that book for everyone to take away some some really good learnings that can change uh, change lives and situations. So ice cream. <laughs>
Ah, uh, yeah. You can't have I C without the I, y'all. That's right. There That's right, go. indeed. <laughs> That's right. Unless you're lactose, who doesn't like ice cream? I mean, That's hey, right. it's good. It's good <laughs> Even stuff. Even if you are lactose intolerant, you probably love ice cream. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You're like, oh, let me go ahead and go for it. <laughs> the aftermath, no. <laughs> but it tastes so good. <laughs> That's right. You heard it right, folks. This book is Ice Cream, baby. That's right. All the Rocky Roads. The butter pecan, y'all. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yes, indeed. Well, coming down to the magical question that every guest gets to receive, and that is if you're going to wake up tomorrow and you're 25 again, but you're still in the year of 2022, what advice would you give to yourself? Mm, I, I mean, I'd have to say that I, I need to accelerate this journey that I started in my mid 40s, and I need to be doing it like starting it right then when I'm 25. When I was 25, I had just taken the Myers Briggs test probably two or three years earlier on a um, business team building sort of exercise. And as we talked about, it kind of set me off in, in an even worse direction because it really didn't explain things. And so it took me decades to actually find the journey I needed to take. And so that's what I would do is because I honestly wasted opportunities. I wasted chances to mentor other people at work. And I wasted opportunities to be a more confident person and have more energy when I came home from work. So that would have been life changing if I had done that at 25, but I'm happy that I did it at 45 or so instead of at 80, you know, everybody's different. Woohoo! There you yeah. go, folks. That's right. Start sooner, y'all. That's right. You have that idea. Start sooner. You need that confidence. Start sooner. Indeed. Start sooner. Like you're in Oklahoma or boomer sooner. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, but hey, it ain't about ghost or it's just about my man Steve. So for those who need to keep in contact with you and all the stuff you're doing, what's the best way for folks to do so? Uh great. The best way is uh, my website. It's beyondintroversion.com. So there you can find the quizzes that we talked about. There we talked about one, there's others. You can talk, you can find blogs, other resources. Uh, books, podcasts from a wide variety of people in the introvert community. So find something that kind of interests you and delve into it a bit more. Uh, so, uh, and my email's on there, so you can send me a note. I respond to all the notes. I'm happy to, to, um, to chat about, you know, your situation or try and help you find the resources that you're looking for. So uh, you can find me at beyondintroversion.com. Woohoo! Well, yeah. there you have it. Folks, beyondintroversion.com indeed, baby. That's right. We're going to put the link to that in the show notes so that way you'll have it indeed. And be sure to check out my man Steve's wonderful work online indeed. And take that quiz. Pretty interesting indeed. Pretty interesting indeed. All sorts of stuff. I mean, who who doesn't love quizzes? Heck, even Facebook mm -hmm. got mad at folks uploading quizzes back in 2019 because folks made lots of billions of people take quizzes for information. So, hey, good mm -hmm. stuff. <laughs> so any parting words before we close up shop my friend well thank you very much uh dom for ha having me i found um i love to do podcasts honestly as an introvert i found them to be a bit overwhelming when i first started but like everything and like we talked about you know you'll you dip your toe in there you try and then you you benefit from the ripples that come um, from the water as once you dip your toe in and um you know, and I find that everybody from from listeners to, to hosts have different pers perspectives on what is introversion. I love your questions and I love your um, approach and attitude. And I hope that others will um, go down their own personal journey. And um, so I, I look forward to hearing other people's stories along the way. Hey, you. Yeah, you. The one listening right now. Thanks a bunch for sharing some of your time out of your day to listen to this podcast. To take it to the next level, be sure to share it with someone that you care about and that would get something out of this podcast too. Advance others to advance yourself. <laughs>